On Monday, July 1st, a new comet was detected in our solar system. It is not unlike two other objects that have visited us before, Oumuamua in 2017 and Comet Borisov in 2019. While these three objects are different from each other in some ways, they all share one similarity. They came to us from outside our solar system. Now you might be asking, man on the internet, how do we know this? And we will get to the answer for that. But first, let us examine how we discovered it. There is a NASA funded program called ATLAS, which stands for Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. This system utilizes a total of four telescopes around the world. Uh, and right now, all the current scopes are the same. They are 20 inch Wright Schmidt scopes made by DFM Engineering. And this type of scope was selected because of its wide field of view and the fact that when paired with a camera, it results in great image quality. This makes it an excellent pick for any kind of astronomical survey. This program has a fifth scope coming too, but it will be different from the others. It was commissioned in February of 2025 and will be placed at the T-Day Observatory in Spain. By completion, this program aims to have eight scopes total. The current telescopes can be found on Haleakala and Moana Loa, both in Hawaii, Sutherland Observatory in South Africa, and the El Saos Observatory in Chile. I'm sure I got some or all of those names wrong. It is this last one that got the initial observations of 3 i Atlas. We can see here that it was first detected as a speck of light moving relative to the stars behind it. Over 100 observations were taken to gather data on this comet. This was compared with past data from the other Atlas telescopes and Caltech's Zwicky Transient Facility at the Palomar Observatory in San Diego County. Now from these data we learned that the earliest 3i atlas appeared in our observations was June 14th, and this turned out to be very helpful for figuring out its trajectory. Before we go into the comet's trajectory, let us have a look at different orbital types, and there are four of them, circular, elliptical, parabolic, and hyperbolic. Now when looking at the math, each of these types can be defined as a slice taken out of a cone. Of these four types, two really only show up in math, while the other two can both show up in math and be observed in space. Let's start by examining the two that we don't see in space, starting with the circular orbit. In this type of orbit, the object moves in a perfect circle and maintains a constant distance from the system's center of mass. The second one is the parabolic orbit. This type is like one we will explore later in that it does not remain in orbit around the central object, but instead swings around it before heading off into space. A true perfect parabolic orbit calls for the exact amount of energy needed to achieve this and so would be nearly impossible to occur in space. This is because the precise amount of energy needed for such an orbit would be both difficult to achieve, difficult to sustain, and could very easily be influenced by other objects surrounding it. So what about the objects we can observe in space. These are the elliptical orbit and the hyperbolic orbit. Now when we look at our solar system, every orbiting object we see is in an elliptical orbit. Earth, Pluto, you name it. This means they are orbiting in an oval shaped trajectory where they are not always the same distance from the system's center of mass, which in this case is our sun. But what happened when the trajectory for 3i Atlas was calculated? What we saw is that it is in a hyperbolic orbit. In a hyperbolic orbit, 
the object has enough speed to escape the gravitational influence of the central object, which in this case is the sun. So rather than falling into an orbit, it is going to zip right on by. What distinguishes a hyperbolic orbit from a parabolic orbit is that in the first one, the object has more energy than it needs to achieve that flyby, rather than like the perfect amount. Now the speed that 3i Atlas is moving at is 150,000 miles per hour, but it is too far away from the sun for the sun's influence to have caused that. When we watch how it passes through our solar system as well, we see no potential planetary flybys that may have sped it up. All this pretty much means that it came to us from outside our solar system. Now it comes from the area of the constellation Sagittarius, which means it possibly originated from the center of our galaxy or closer to the center of our galaxy and from a spot with a very different environment from our own. Now, what might we be looking for when studying this comet and what can it potentially teach us? First and foremost, because we know the path it is taking, we know there is no risk of it hitting Earth. So here we can see the actual trajectory that the comet's going to take. And if we zoom in here to the inner solar system, we see that it will cross paths with Mars, but it's just not going to cross paths with Earth. In fact, here on Earth, we're pretty much on the opposite side of the sun from the area where the comet is. And we will see that it's just going to move its way right on out of our solar system. Now, while it would be really cool for us to visit this comet with a spacecraft, that is not an option for us this time around. For that to have been possible, we would have needed to spot it sometime in 2024. But with telescopes like Vera Rubin coming online, we will surely be discovering far more interstellar objects like this one. And so I am certain we will one day get a mission out to one of them. And if you want to learn more about this Vera Rubin Observatory, please check out my video on it. That'll be somewhere up here. We can still study the comet from a distance, though. And we, I mean, we are already doing that. One of the first things we notice from images is that it is active, meaning around its nucleus, a coma was seen. This is how we know it is a comet. While we are uncertain of its specific size, we do know it is larger than its two previous counterparts. It's hard to know for sure how big it is because of the coma, right? Like it's a big puffy cloud around the nucleus of the comet, but estimates put it at around 12 miles wide at the biggest. Scientists will be looking in more detail about the size of this object, how active it becomes as it passes closer to the sun, and of course, what it is made of. This last one will be made easier the more active it becomes because it will be outgassing more of its material, which will let us use methods like spectroscopy to learn more about its composition. This will not only show us what the object itself is made of, but it might also lead us to clues about the formation of star systems other than our own. Having the ability to study interstellar objects, but right here in our cosmic backyard, will never not be cool to me. And the more of these objects we discover, the more we're going to be able to learn about conditions outside our solar system. And as I mentioned earlier, I am certain that one day we will get to send a spacecraft directly to one of these visitors as well. Until then, let us take advantage of the fact that we still have them and that we can learn from them at a distance. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. And beyond that, I hope you have learned something and let us all step outside tonight and look towards the stars.